Yeah, I had it for a couple of years, but I had to pay like eighty-five dollars. Is it called Lobulus? No. I think that's one of them. That might be the, the main name. I don't know. It, when you open up the link, it should say that you know downloadable raw and da da da. So the reason I'm telling you that is you Sorry. don't have a USB port. They were very anagogic, these dreams. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah. Spilling over. <laughs> huh? What do you make of that? Dream Master is a very good musician. Yeah, what do you make of the fact that <clears throat> You people master, are coming up with rather profound dreams. The dream master has nothing but good will and intention and is willing to so show you what keeps you most from being your true self so that you'll best see your true self. <laughs> what do you make of it? I hang out with profound people. That's it. Well, and just and stru structurally, it moves from, both of them move from a, a darker place to a lighter place, right? In that sense of leading upwards. <coughs> Once you start, once you start the game, you can't get out of it, right? Once you get in, once you get through that door, you're in. You may sneak out once in a while, but you're in. There should be a disclaimer. There should be a disclaimer. Try. Careful. Well, <clears throat> uh, this is amazing work, isn't it? And uh, um,
I'll tell you what. Um, I keep going back to the same section. So why not we just do two pages uh, or a page 98. Just, I keep going back to this so it looks like I'm stuck. Um, <clears throat> Do you mean Stephanus 98? Yeah. Well, oh, no, it couldn't be. No, this doesn't go that way. That's a <clears throat> rather long sentence to want to bust into. With respect, however, to the most principal and excellent species of the soul, we should conceive as follows that divinity assigned this to each of us a daemon that it resides in the very summit of the body elevating us from earth to an alliance with the heavens as we are not terrestrial plants but blossoms of heaven. And this indeed is most truly asserted. For from whence the first generation of soul arose, from hence a divine nature being suspended from our head and root directs and governs the whole of our corporeal frame. In him, therefore, who vehemently labors to satisfy the cravings of desire and ambition, all the conceptions of his soul must be necessarily mortal. And himself, as much as possible, must become entirely mortal, since he leaves nothing unaccomplished which tends to increase his perishable part. But it is necessary that he who is seducedly employed in the acquisition of knowledge, who is anxious to acquire the wisdom of truth, and who employs his most vigorous assertions in this one pursuit. It is perfectly necessary that such a one, if he touches on the truth, should be endued with wisdom about immortal and divine concerns and that he should participate of immortality as far as human nature permits without leaving any part of it behind. And besides, as such a one always cultivates that which is divine and has a daemon most excellently adorned residing in his essence, he must be happy in the most eminent degree. The culture of all the parts is indeed entirely one and consists in assigning proper nurturement and motion to each. But the motions which are allied to the divine part of our nature, ah, ah, that's the dianoetic energies and circulations of the universe. These therefore each of us ought to pursue, restoring Right, restoring in such a manner those revolutions in our head which have been corrupted by our wanderings about generation, though diligently considering the harmonies and the circulations of the universe, that the intellectual power may become assimilated to the object of intelligence according to its ancient nature. For when thus assimilated, we shall obtain the end of the best life proposed by the gods to men, both in the present and the future circulations of time. And now that disputation which we announced at the beginning concerning the universe, as far as to the generation of man, has almost received its consummation. Yeah. Rather interesting. Yeah. Right. By the way, uh, the three parts of the soul 
are uh, taken out of Plato, the three parts of the soul, raisin, uh, spirit, and the appetitive. He calls each one of those separate parts of the soul. So back to uh, 41. We need someone to read. Thank you. previous material, mixing it in somewhat the same manner, yet no longer with a uniform and invariable purity, but second and third in degree of purity. Where are you? 41. Just 41. 41B. 41B, then? Where are we? I thought he was on 89. I thought he said. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Page 89. Page 89. Sorry, I was in the wrong spot. Go ahead. Uh, 41A. 41A? Now when all the gods, both those who, res who revolve manifestly and those who manifest themselves so far as they choose had come to birth, he that generated this all addressed them thus, gods of gods, those works whereof I am framer and father, are indissoluble, save by my will. For though all that is bound may be dissolved, yet to will to dissolve that which is fairly joined together and in good case were the deed of a wicked one. Wherefore ye also, seeing that ye were generated, are not wholly immortal or indissoluble, yet in no wise shall you be dissolved nor incur the doom of death, seeing that in my will you possess a bond greater and more sovereign than the bonds wherewith at your birth you were bound together. Now, therefore, what I manifest and declare unto you, do you learn? Three mortal kinds still remain ungenerated, but if these come not into being, the heaven will be imperfect. For it will not contain within itself the whole sum of the kinds of living creatures, yet contain them it must, if it is to be fully perfect. But if by my doing these creatures came into existence and partook of life, they would be made equal unto gods. In order, therefore, that they may be mortal, and that this world all may be truly all, do you turn yourselves as nature directs, to the work of fashioning these living creatures, imitating the power showed by me in my generating of you. Now so much of them as it is proper to designate immortal, the part we call divine, which rules supreme in those who are fain to follow justice always, and yourselves, that part I will deliver unto you when I have sown it and given it origin. For the rest, do you weave together the mortal with the immortal, and thereby fashion and generate living creatures, and give them food that they may grow, and when they waste away, receive them to yourselves again? Thus he spoke, and once more into the former bowl, wherein he had blended and mixed the soul of the universe. He poured the residue of the previous material, mixing it in somewhat the same manner, yet no longer with a uniform and invariable purity, but second and third in degree of purity. And when he had compounded the whole, he divided it into souls equal in number to the stars, and each several soul he assigned to one star, and setting them each as it were in a chariot, he showed them the nature of the universe, and declared unto them the laws of destiny, 
namely, how that the first birth should be one and the same ordained for all, in order that none might be slighted by him, and how it was needful that they, when sown each into his own proper organ of time, should grow into the most God-fearing of living creatures, and that since human nature is twofold, the superior sex is that which hereafter should be designated man, and when by virtue of necessity they should be implanted in bodies, and their bodies are subject to influx and efflux, these results would necessarily follow. First, <coughs> sensation that is innate and common to all proceeding from violent affections. Secondly, desire mingled with pleasure and pain. And besides these, fear and anger and all such emotions as are naturally allied thereto, and all such as, a, as are of a different and opposite character. And if they shall master these, they will live justly. But if they are mastered, unjustly. And he that has lived his appointed time well shall return again to his abode in his native star and shall gain a life that is blessed and congenial. And whoso has failed therein shall be changed into woman's nature at the second birth. And if in that shape he still refrains not from wickedness, he shall be changed every time according to the nature of his wickedness into some bestial form after the similitude of his own nature. Nor in his changings shall he cease from woes until he yields himself to the revolution of the same and similar that is within him, and dominating by force of reason that burdensome mass which afterwards adhered to him of fire and water and earth and air a mass tumultuous and irrational, returns again to the semblance of his first and best state. When he had fully declared unto them all these ordinances, to the end that he might be blameless in respect to the future wickedness of any one of them, he proceeded to sow them, some in the earth, some in the moon, others in the rest of the organs of time. Following upon this sowing, he delivered over to the young gods the task of molding mortal bodies and of framing and controlling all the rest of the human soul, which it was still necessary to add, together with all that belonged thereto, and of governing this mortal creature in the most beautiful and best way possible to the utmost of their power, except insofar as it might itself become the cause of its own evils. So he then, having given all these commands, was abiding in his own proper and wanted, wanted state. And as he thus abode, his children gave heed to their father's command and obeyed it. They took the immortal principle of the mortal living creature, and imitating their own maker, they borrowed from the cosmos portions of fire and earth and water and air, as if meaning to pay them back, and the portion so taken they cemented together. But it was not with those indissoluble bonds wherewith they themselves were joined that they fastened together the portions, but with numerous pegs, invisible for smallness. And thus they constructed out of them all each several body, and within bodies subject to inflow and outflow, they bound the revolutions of the immortal soul. The souls then, being thus bound within a mighty river, neither mastered it, neither mastered it, nor were mastered, but with violence they rolled along and were rolled along themselves, so that the whole of the living creature was moved, but in such a random way that its progress was disorderly and irrational since it partook of all the six motions, for it progressed forwards and backwards, and again to right and to left, and upwards and downwards, wandering every way in all the six directions. For while the flood which foamed in and streamed out as it supplied the food was immense, still greater was the tumult produced within each creature as a result of the colliding bodies. When the body of the creature happened to meet and collide with 
I don't know if you want to keep me going. Keep going, but. What do you look, look at? Uh, what do you find interesting about this time is? What, what, do, you, what do you find? Well, there's the very obvious kind of delegation of responsibility to the younger gods and reasoning. That there's a, an insistence on precision. He can't be the creator of the things he's talking about. The younger gods have to. <clears throat> He said at one point it was due to his, his efforts that the God came into being. But that gave him a problem because he said, commanded the gods to make three ty types of beings and then left out the one type of being which could be uh, considered immortal. Um, and because he said he hadn't given that to him then yet. So what he's really doing is sort of a, a genesis without a platonic sense of perfection. I almost felt like I was reading the Bible there. <clears throat> yeah. um, All the principles that he's talking about in this early part then play out their role within the soul in the end of the work. Yeah, I was just going to, yeah, that, that piece you added right. earlier should have been placed before. Yeah. Yeah. But we got it anyway, so thank you. So he has a macro, micro, macro in the reality, the micro man, same dynamics, one great, one lesser, but the same principles. Rather clever work. Who, who, who did it again? Plato. But who? Play? Plato. Oh. He seems to, it's, he Greek? really, yeah. Oh. He seems to think that motion itself in the universe has an irrationality to it. Mm. Like in your micro-macro idea. Yeah. The, the, the whole, the cosmos, can't escape the irrational. It's like a fact of motion. But the part you just read uh, it's designed in such a way so that there's no room for evil. Irrational, yes, but no evil. Well, he talks about mass Dis yeah, disorderly and irrational. He has, he has all these. Man has all human souls have. Excuse me, souls have all these qualities. Mm -hmm. Um, that are listed here, and uh, but he says, and if they shall master these, they will live justly. But if they are, if they are mastered, then they're going to be unjust. So they either mas master or don't master um, all these affections that he. That he gives to bodies. <clears throat> See, this idea of motion that you mentioned, if you go to 88b, that's where he shows the same principles in the soul. Um, and among the motions, the best uh, in any nature is that which uh, takes place in itself from itself. Right? It's a beautiful section. If you want to get to 88B, um, the most divine part of our nature, in this case, the motions of that which is more powerful prevail and increase that which is their own, but render the dionetic part of the soul dull, right? oblivious, produces ignorance, which is the greatest of all diseases. Right? For him, 
the worst disease is folly. When he talks about the different kinds of disease, he says folly is a disease. Ignorance is a disease. It's a, it ruins the soul, therefore it's a disease. It's the greatest of all diseases, ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> But of all motions, that is the best in any nature which takes place in itself from itself. For this is particularly allied to the dionoetic motion of the universe. But that motion is the worst kind which is produced by another. And that is the worst of all motions when in the body, <coughs> being in a uh, recumbent and quiet state is moved by others according to parts and hence all the purgations and the concretions of the body that is best which subsists through gymnastics. The next to this is that which takes place with the easy carriage and therefore he goes on. But diseases unless they're extremely dangerous are not to be irritated by medicines. Not by medicines. By changing the states of mind. So therefore at 90, we have often then previously asserted that there are three species of soul within us, triply distributed, and that each has its own proper motion. And we shall now therefore briefly affirm that when any one of them is in a torpid state and rests from its own proper motions, it, it necessarily becomes most imbecile but that when it is employed in convenient exercises, it becomes most vigorous and robust. We should therefore be careful that the several species which preserve their motions must be commensurate with each other and to each other. Therefore, at 90b. But it's necessary that he who was uh, seduciously employed in the acquisition of knowledge, who is anxious to acquire the wisdom of truth, and who employs this most vigorous exertions in his one pursuit, is perfectly necessary that such a one, if he touches on the truth, should be endued with wisdom about mortal and divine concerns that he should participate of immortality insofar as human nature is capable of it. Interesting work. Greek, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, Pierre, what do, you, what do you think he means by that thing that you mentioned in particular, the um, motion of the body? Well, the, each, there's three kinds of motions. This one right here at 89. He, yeah. Further, as concerns the motions, the best motion of a body is that caused by itself in itself. For this yeah. is most nearly akin to the motion of intelligence and the motion of the universe. See, there are three parts of the soul. He calls each one of them a different soul. Each one has its own proper motion. And therefore, each one has to be exercised appropriately for each kind of motion. Yeah, I know that, but I'm, I'm on the... the, the Prior, I'm on the lower level. Oh. <laughs> it says the right at 89, not the motion of the soul, but the best motion of a body. Yeah. Is that caused yeah. by itself? What is that like? It has to be in itself. A rock's motion? Or, yeah, he it said, has to be in itself for itself. Well, he says it's. Rock have power. Yeah. Well, a motion due to the agency of another is less good. Yeah. So it's self-moving. Well, how is the body self-moving? gets a bit of a, a, a touch of that eternity from whence it was generated. Yeah, what kind of body is self-moving? I thought it's the soul in the body that moves it. Well, maybe he's talking about the poor lot of mankind. Maybe maybe that's the, the brilliance of immortality, <coughs> even in a living thing. Um, also, uh, you want to look over at the Greek and see if uh, itself is the case.
it, if itself is the key, the idea of in itself by itself. For itself yeah. mm -hmm. In itself by itself. What about? It? Well, you, you but that, that's a word. word itself, I do. Yes, oh, so, yeah. please. Uh, no, I get it. She's she's pulling. He says auto means it so, and I thought a auto was it so. With it. Epsilon Yeah, there's epsilon there. Well, 242. It's the Greek page. It's the Greek page. Um, can you read this the Greek start with total? I don't maybe maybe bodies is see I'm stuck I'm i I'm on not the itself part, but the idea of the it yeah. being bodily motion. I don't see the idea of bodies in the Greek there, but just yeah, I don't see so much either. A bad translation. Well, so are you able to read this could be soul motion. It, it, What's that? That has to, yeah. Each one is distinct and separate. And the, phys the physical body, which is uh, in itself, he doesn't want to contend. It, it is not interrelated with the others. So it's in itself. Hmm. Which is great. Um, here, uh, we have we have often then previously asserted that there are three species of soul within us, mm -hmm. triply distributed, and that each has its own proper motions. And we shall now, therefore, briefly affirm that when any one of them is in a torpid state and rests from its own proper motions, ah, it necessarily becomes most imbecile. But when it's employed in convenient exercises, it becomes most rigorous and robust. Therefore, we should to be careful that the special, the several species may reserve and preserve their motions so as to be commensurate to each other. Yeah, so, I, curious work, isn't it? What do you see, Barbara? Well, not, Barbara's also in this curious work. No, no, well, how about not, not right now? <laughs> no, no, I've just been, I haven't been attending to the Hymenaeus. I've been attending to the Parmenides. But I, I do have a question. Um, I don't know about your question, what, what the answer is. No, I, 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 I resolved. You I got it resolved? Yeah, I saw that it was, it's, there's bodies is not in the Greek, so we could play with that. The question. Well, you remember I told you that, that there was a quote I really liked in here, and it, but it's about the motion of the cosmos. Yes. It's rather, I mean, the cosmic soul. And so I really wondered, because I always thought that it applied to the human soul as well. Yes. And so, but I thought you argued against that. Or am I wrong about that? No. The, and it's the, it's the quote, it seems to me it's like 37 or something. Well, I think at 88 is uh, also where he applies it to the oh, soul. Oh, 88 I really like, yeah. yeah and yeah. he talks about making the, the motions of your soul like to the motions right. of the body. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's, yeah, it's at 37A. And so, and it's the one where it says, um, and whereas, well, hmm. And the construction of the soul, cosmic soul, had all been completed, so we're at 36E, to the satisfaction of its constructure, then he fabricated within it all the corporeal, and uniting them century to century, made them fit together. And the soul, being woven throughout the heaven every way, from the center to the extremity, and enveloping it in a circle from without, and herself or self, revolving within herself, began a divine beginning of unceasing and intelligent life, lasting throughout all time. 
And whereas the body of the heaven is visible, the soul is herself invisible, but partakes in reasoning and in harmony, having come into existence by the agencies of the best, it's not really the best of things, but the best intelligible beings and ever existing as the best of things generated. Inasmuch then, as she is a compound, blended of the natures of the same and the other in being, these three portions, and is proportionately, or by logos, divided and bound together, and revolves back upon herself, right, back upon herself, whenever she touches anything which has its substance dispersed, or anything which has its substance undivided, she is moved throughout her whole being and announces what the object is identical with and from what it is different, and in what relation, where and how and when. It comes about that each thing exists and is acted upon by others, both in the sphere of the becoming and in that of the ever uniform. And her announcement, it's her logos, being identically con true concerning both the other and the same is born through the self move without speech or sound. And whenever it is concerned with the sensible and the surface, circle of the other moving in straight course proclaims it to the whole of its soul, opinions and beliefs arise which are firm and true. And again, when it is concerned with the rational and the circle of the same, spinning truly declares the facts, reason, which, which is actually news, and knowledge or epistemic <coughs> of necessity result. But should ever, anyone assert that the substance in which these two states arise is something other than soul, his assertion will be anything rather than the truth. Now this, is this um, on the level of cosmic soul, the idea when we just read rectifying the motions of the soul so that the soul becomes the thinking of the soul or the, the motion of the same becomes like unto the object of thought? Yes. Is that what we're talking yes. about? Yes. Okay, because yes. I thought we were in disagreement. Yeah. No, no, this is cosmic. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, and therefore, so this, isn't that saying about one's own soul? But that, that comes one later. One will yes. come to truth and right opinion right. through if one has corrected the revolutions of the soul. Yes. Beautifully said. Okay. I did a bunch of. By the way, I did a bunch of searches. Oh. Which, no, no, I gave them. I actually gave them to everybody in the Fahrenheit group, probably. Um, taking the passage Pierre talked about, the one about the revolutions and harmonies and making the similarity. Um, let's see, where is this? I think it's only three pages long. Yeah, this, this, this takes the term harmony and, and revolution, and there's three different words for revolution, and DNA, and analog, analogy, and I did searches on the TLG for those terms, and especially the first sets of terms are really amazing to go from 90 and like work yourself, structure out that quote oh, on revolutions. That 90 and section. Then go, yeah. through, go through those revolutions and harmonies. It, it, they're just really beautiful. So I have a few copies. Yeah, yeah. I'll take one. You will? Okay. I have one. I don't know how many. And I can send you this. This is a Microsoft Word document. Anybody else? Yeah. I didn't realize I had so many topics. I think I was planning to give it out. Oh, is there just one sheet? Three sheets. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Somehow, Oops. I'm missing the third sheet. But I can send the Microsoft Word document to everybody on, on the list. Help Thank you. Make a, okay, good. Well, how can I do that? No, I can send it to everybody who's here listening. <laughs> well, because that stupid uh, uh, MailChimp doesn't ha take attachments. That's why. Oh, what about we can put it up, Jeff? I'm sure you have like immense leisure. Uh, oh. We can put it up on the Balboa thing. I There's also. Next week. 
whichever you want. But you need three papers. There's also a box of books there, kind of popular reading. There are, anyone wants any copies, please take them. Oh, the, the Art of the Deal is in there? Yeah, that's oh. over there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I decided I was going to go out and do some reading. You know, just like, oh, so right. I right. went to the bookstore and I said, oh, I'm going to keep, well, I got 12 pages in one, uh, eight in another, but they're there for anyone who wants to. <laughs> they're said to be good stuff, I just couldn't get through it. <laughs> Sounds like when you watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just take them on. <laughs> Any? Oh, you didn't like that one? Either. No. <laughs> it looked good. It looked good. Master game is or his one that'll put you to sleep. I mean, uh, it's very exciting. <laughs> I don't know, I just put him in. That's an old one. Ever read it?